All right, here we go. It is Wednesday evening, Weather for Weather Geeks time. As promised, I, uh, I told you last evening, if you watched the video, that uh, we do a little halftime report here on meteorological winter, the months of December, January, and February. Now that we're halfway through January, that means we're halfway through winter. And no surprise, it's been pretty warm, but it has not been the warmest first half of winter on record. That distinction goes to the winter of 1931-32. Interesting that uh, we have a few super El Ninos on this list. 82, 83, uh, 1516, and 97, 98 were the three strongest El Ninos on record. And that was a, those were large drivers of the warmth during the first half of those winters. We have no such strong El Nino this year. It's kind of a, a neutral signal out in the Pacific. So that is not the main driver. What is the main driver? Well, there's a lot of things going on from the Indian Ocean into the Pacific, parts of the Atlantic. And of course, all of this is against a background state of the globe warming uh, at a rapid pace. You may have seen today that 2019 was declared by the World Meteorological Agency that uh, that was the, the second hottest year on record, uh, trailing 2016 by just a uh, hair. And so with that background state, and then when you have some short-term drivers of the, uh, of the jet stream and of uh, hemispheric weather patterns, you can get uh, things like this happening on to winter uh, this year. And uh, I promise you that the second half of winter will not be as warm as the uh, as the first part of winter 49 was the high today 53 in akron 53 in cleveland this afternoon and pittsburgh did 51 this afternoon but cold air is on the move compared to 24 hours ago it's anywhere from 10 to 20 degrees colder out across the middle of the country that's the air mass that's heading our way and uh, here's the actual temperatures as of 706 eastern time eight in minneapolis nine in bismarck believe it or not that's a lot warmer than they were this time yesterday uh, closer to home, Chicago is at 35, and I think we're going to see temperatures kind of flatlining here tomorrow as that colder air mass moves in. All right, we've had some showers that have pushed in just after sunset this evening. Uh, the radar wants to play a few games here with the uh, color scheme, but believe it or not, uh, it's middle of January. It's way too warm for snow. Yeah, we're still seeing liquid precipitation. It showers as of 707, primarily to the north and east of Youngstown. These are going to this evening and then later tonight as that colder air starts to wrap in i think some flurries will start to emerge now i'm not concerned at all about the rush hour period tomorrow morning temperatures are going to be around 32 33 and i think snow is primarily fairly light there's going to be some flurries flying but i'm not anticipating travel difficulties for the first part of the day on thursday now later thursday it becomes a different story as the air down here at the ground level and upstairs a little bit starts to cool. Don't forget, there's absolutely no ice on Lake Erie. Uh, we're going to see some lake enhancement and lake effect going on and some snow showers that mean a little bit more business will try to get organized as we get into the afternoon and into the evening. And as I mentioned last night, there may even be a lake here on with some of these snow showers and maybe even a localized squall. So I'm a little, little bit more concerned about road conditions later in the day on Thursday and into the first part of Thursday night. We could still be dealing with some pretty beefy snow showers, maybe all the way through 10, 11 o'clock, maybe midnight or so tomorrow night. As far as accumulations go, this is going to be uh, pretty modest, I think, in our area, but let's focus on the impacts. But uh, I will talk about some accumulations here. You know, best chance for five or six inches up towards Meadville, into Crawford County, and up towards Erie, and then into southwest New York. I don't think anyone's going to see five or six inches in our television area. But could someone see an inch or two or three? Yeah, I think that's a distinct possibility with the highest chance of that uh, being primarily once you get up towards Mercer County, maybe parts of a northern Trumbull as well. Uh, overall, the higher end of this range, the three inch amounts probably are reserved for areas over here in the eastern and northeastern part of Mercer County. Sandy Lake heading down towards Mercer, uh, New Lebanon, places like that. Um, that's your, those are the locations with the best chance of seeing the top end of our one to three range. The rest of this light blue area, inch or so I think could could occur in some places and then it's probably under an inch just about everywhere once you're down in the southern Mahoning County and into Columbiana County as well that being said a little caveat here even if you just get a quarter of an inch of snow if it all comes in five minutes with a quick re uh, visibility reducing snow shower it could still be impactful so let's not focus too much on the amounts and focus more on the impact. So it's gonna be another one of those days that we have sometimes in the winter with changeable conditions especially in the afternoon and evening uh, wind chills will be a story tomorrow, mostly in the teens, with temperatures kind of flatlining in the upper 20s for the midday and afternoon. Now we're kind of in between systems on Friday. I think we'll see some sun. It's going to be seasonable.
in the upper 20s. All right, let's do an update on our next weather maker. This is later Friday night and into Saturday morning. A warm front heads our way. Now, when the moisture arrives, the temperatures both at the ground level and throughout the air column above our heads will be cold enough to support snow. But I don't think that'll be the case all day on Saturday. In fact, we'll see a changeover to rain probably by midday. Now, the transition from snow to rain may be marked by, by a period of some sort of mixed precipitation. I suspect our model here is uh, holding on to the snow a little bit too long. Uh, some mixed precipitation uh, could become a possibility as early as mid-morning on Saturday. That means maybe some sleet, maybe a period of freezing rain as temperatures slowly edge up towards freezing and get above freezing. But uh, whether we get a, a transition to some sort of mix or not, it should just be rain for the afternoon on Saturday. So impacts on Saturday. This will be primarily confined to early in the day on Saturday with the uh, chances of impactful road conditions decreasing rapidly by afternoon as we see a changeover to some uh, some rain. So if you are an early morning traveler on Saturday, if you've got to go to work or do anything Saturday morning, be prepared for some slower than usual travel and uh, maybe even be prepared for a brief period of some sort of mixed precipitation right around mid-morning-ish and uh, then things should improve some for the afternoon. It'll turn windy and mild. Snow accumulations with our uh, system Friday night, Saturday morning. Here's the computer model spread right now. Uh, most of our models are kind of in this range, inch and a half to three inches. I think that is reasonable. I think a lot of places are going to see somewhere between an inch and three inches worth of snow early in the day on Saturday before that transition over to rain. Very cold. Nothing record-breaking, but Compared to where we've been this winter, very cold for the first half of next week. Here comes that colder air mass right there. It's over us through the first half of the week. By the second half of the week, I think that cold air is replaced by a pretty decent air mass. Not as warm as we have been lately, but probably some 40s for a couple of days late next week. But that visitation by the warmer air, unlike the first half of winter, it probably does not have the kind of legs that the uh, warm periods have had so far this winter. It should be replaced by a colder regime again during the following week and in the last handful of days of January. So this is the 28th, 29th, 30th, as we head towards Super Bowl weekend, Groundhog Day, etc. cetera. Uh, I do think that um, seeing some colder than average temperatures, latest run of the uh, CFS climate forecast system modeling for February shows a yeah, pretty cold looking month. I think odds are strongly, strongly in favor of February easily being the coldest month of meteorological winter, unlike the uh, last few years, including last year, where winter kind of ended with a with a, a just kind of a dud February. Uh, I do think February stands a pretty good chance of being our most significantly cold month of winter. Does that mean a lot of snow? Can't make that call as of yet, but uh, I'm, I'm seeing some cold signals for uh, a good chunk of February, at least somewhat colder than average things like that does not seem likely at this point um, but colder than January and probably a fair bit colder than December was as well that'll do it for me look for more updates on our two snow chances over the next few days this evening on 21 news at 11 the storm tracker 21 app Facebook Twitter Instagram and everything else I'll see you back here for more weather geeks on Thursday